Hi everyone, this is Mahabeli from the American University in Cairo. And uh, we're gonna do today a reflective activity called the Sailboat Retrospective, which is good for reflecting after a big project or an activity. If it's something the whole class has done together, then you could uh, reflect on one uh, item at a time and have students add to what other students have written about the same thing. If it's about uh, something like a small group are working, you know, four students working on one thing, another four students working on another thing, then those four can just sit together and reflect on everything together. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. I got this from a colleague of mine who does design thinking. Mia, could you move to the next slide? Thank you. So basically, it's a, it's a graphic of um, a sailboat in water. And the wind is what helps us go forward. So the wind is the thing that's helping us achieve our, our goal for that project. The sun is something that made you feel good. The anchor is something that's holding you back. And the reef is future risks ahead. So what I've done is I've created a slide deck with each of these questions, one slide at a time. If it was on paper or something like a mural, you could just use sticky notes together on all of these. But you could also just, you know, do that. So what I'm going to do is, folks who are here have been in something called the writers' retreat together, um, and so I would love it if they would uh, reflect on that. And so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna move uh, someone who came in here to a breakout room, and then yeah, go ahead, you guys. So reflecting on the writers' retreat, I'll put a new slide deck for you to reflect on. You can use this slide deck. Uh, you can actually type, you can have, like, if Mia unshares her screen, uh -huh. um, and one of you could share your screen and type notes as the others speak, or you can all write in the same slide deck and just okay. talk about it. So we go to the link that you've provided in the chat, correct? Okay. So maybe that first element is wind. Who or what has helped uh, the writer's retreat go well? So we're just going to type it in there in the slide. Yes, yes. I think and so. Speak and speak out loud as well as yeah. you do that. I'm just going to say the obvious. It's Dr. Zamora. <laughs> so <laughs> um, she's been our fearless leader who's set uh, helped to set the stage for just learning and creativity and inspiration and, and safety. So um, and especially the one on one times with her. Um, have helped me to clarify and continue to move forward. So that's my uh, one of my one of my contributions. That's very kind. Thank you, Tara. You're welcome. Um, for me, I would say um, having the time to write with everyone. Mm -hmm. Type it in here. Um, because normally. It's hard for me to write, um, even if I set aside time for myself. It's just at Starbucks or at somewhere that the environment's not very good. Um, but having the specific space and the time here with everyone, that really helped me um, just stay focused and just actually write what I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sense of community, even if you're doing independent work, side by side with other people is really powerful. Uh, Theodora, do you have something you want to add here? Um, yeah, I guess I would say um, the uh, mini groups and like the group feedback, I, I guess that I, feel, I find that a bit helpful to bring me out of my own head, I guess. Yeah. Um, Writers are, um, we have a retreat, which is a, a main group, and then eat, then there are smaller groups. So the smaller groups for feedback seem to be wind for Theodora. I'll also add to the list that I think that the writing um, into the day prompts um, might be helpful. Uh, I've noticed that they seem to be helpful for some of uh, the writers in the retreat in regards to sort of situating their reflection and also like gathering their strength as they move forward, like setting uh, short-term goals, that kind of thing. So I'd, I'd say that's one aspect of it. Um, anything else we want to add, guys? Hmm. 
one other thing that I think I would I, I'm noticing is um, all the community building activities we do, the little things like the check-ins that are very much like the kinds of things we're doing here and now have helped in building trust so that each and every one feels more comfortable in sharing their work or um, receiving feedback, et cetera. So I guess I, I'll um, go back to the slide and, and just um, add the community building um, protocols that we've uh, added to the experience. You want to move on to the next element, gang? Sure. Okay. So I think Maha has the um, the sharing slides, but uh, the next element is the sun. So what were the moments that felt good during the writer's retreat? Um, for me, I would say the writer's chair, uh, the writer's chair in Liberty Hall. Um, mm -hmm. When we, let me write that. Yeah. When we were in um, Liberty Hall, we all sat in the chair, we took turns and we shared a part of our work and um, then everyone gave feedback. And that was really cool because we had only been together three days. So none of our work was complete um, and we all went in knowing that. So instead of worrying if it was quote unquote good or not, um, it didn't matter at that point. We were just sharing it. And then at that point we got to see what everyone was working on. And we were all kind of in the same boat where we had something, but we didn't know exactly what we had. And then all of the feedback that everyone gave, I think it was really helpful. And I know for me specifically, like it let me see things in a different light. And I think for a lot of us, it we got a different perspective because we were so focused on our own work for those three days and then everyone else finally got to see it and they offered a lot. Mm -hmm. I liked the, um, the garden and just being out in nature. I thought that was really inspiring and a, um, just a much needed kind of, I guess like, refueling <laughs> in a sense um, to and you know that like curiosity and exploration and just kind of reminded me um, and in life as well like we have to take those moments for ourselves um, and it, it, it just yeah like just made me made me feel really really good just to have that experience. Theodora, do you have any um, ideas around like sun? What made you feel good during the writer's retreat? <laughs> I think all, um, most of my um, sun stuff has probably already been said. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I did enjoy the authorship with like um, talking about my stuff and especially hearing other people's stuff. And I also enjoyed the time at the... Uh, garden but um I guess I enjoy just um making progress I guess in my mm, work huge that's a big one yeah just the slow march towards progress right yeah. knowing that you know you've gotten some words down right and I see someone wrote down listening which I think is um a really important skill and definitely makes us feel good is to because listening leads to learning right so when you feel that happening inside you you're stopping you're paying close attention you're listening and then you're learning something because of that that's definitely a sunny experience a, a positive um experience um for me it's also oh go ahead 
Sorry, my hand came by a mistake for the next question. So you don't have to move to it. I just oh okay. Just by mistake. <laughs> I was just Sorry. gonna say for me, the the sun and all of this is uh the co-learning experiences I've been having. You know, every time you all write your blogs and then I read them to to syn synthesize a lot of the wisdom in the room, I feel this really powerful experience of learning from each of you as unique individuals. So um yeah let's move on to the next element um let's see that is anchor okay what's held us back from deep or engaging dialogue someone wrote self life <laughs> yeah that was that was me <laughs> i think we're our own greatest barrier to most things or at least our cognitive brain mm -hmm. so um yeah but it, it we talk about ebbs and flows a lot this past mm -hmm. week or so and it's it comes in waves i guess either way um but it's at, at least good to to notice it and acknowledge it and, and try to move past it yeah yeah rather than let it grip us, you know? Yeah. Anyone for else? Me, mm -hmm. um, for me, it was just being vulnerable because I'm writing mm -hmm. about a lot of uh, personal stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, like, especially at first, um, just meeting everybody and then knowing that like three days or four days later, we were gonna have to share some of the stuff and knowing it's personal stuff. Um, but then once we did, uh, a lot of the activities, um, like you mentioned before, um, the check-ins and stuff like that, that really did help us get to know each other. And then um, I felt a lot more comfortable with that. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's also just, I guess the bigger picture too, is knowing that this stuff hopefully will move out of our small circle. So then it's the vulnerability thing all over again. Right, um, yeah. Yeah, but I think once I get it out and just give it to like even a small group of people, then um, it makes it easier anyway. That's a really interesting reflection because like on the one hand that getting over like natural vulnerabilities is um, it's hard each time, just as you point out, Tyler. But then I think there's also something like experience in knowing that you get to the other side of it. And once you've gone through it a few times, it's less, um, there's less weight to it. Um, there's just like a faith that it will be okay, you know, because you've experienced the other side. So it's harder, I think, when you're younger and have less of that reservoir of um, experience around being vulnerable. So um, yeah, it's an important thing to sort of have in your profile of self, experiential like profile, you know, um, and the more you build it up, the more reservoirs you have for it inside you. So I, I thank you for such a thoughtful comment, Tyler. I really like that. Um, other anchors? I guess for me, it would be like the perfectionism or just yeah. generally setting unreasonable expectations for myself and then be like, oh, why didn't you do this? And then it's like, well, you know, you, that's a little bit much for you <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, that monster of perfectionism is real. And I notice it's very um, common amongst creative people, you know, especially writers, that every time we write down something, we immediately full, like come down on it hard internally and then just wanna crumple up the proverbial paper and throw it away because it stinks. It's not what you meant. It's not quite right, you know? But then you keep having so many false starts in that space that it grips you. And I think that's what writer's retreat is. I mean, writer's block is, right? <laughs> that's like yeah. the way that writer's block is experienced. But so, it, but what it really is, is as you put it, Theodora, um, very aptly perfectionism, the bad kind, the kind that makes you feel worried about it's not meeting a standard, a standard inside yourself, a standard in the world, standard, standard, standard. Um, yeah, once we can let go of that, we, we do a lot better. So um, yeah, we all have those anchors in, in, in life. Um, 
and in creative process. And it's good to be able to recognize the paradigms so that we know what it is when it's haunting us. Um, I think we can move on to the next element. Um, so let's do that. The last element is the reef. And the reef represents uh, other negative aspects, like future risks, like what other negative aspects um, might there be? What do you anticipate moving forward? So again, that idea of a future risk. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, I think the writer's retreat has been very helpful because there's a, again, it is like structure, but like it's not a super strict structure. But um, I feel probably in the future when I'm on my own, I won't be as uh, diligent with myself. <laughs> you know, there's I noticed a fear cropping up. It seems like the true like reef barrier reef fear. <laughs> um, of not being able to sustain what was experienced in the retreat after the retreat. Yeah. And um, I, I, I was starting to address it this morning by thinking about small moves and small practices that can be incorporated into the future. Of course, you it's not going to be exactly the same because a retreat is about community too and that sense of feedback and then side by side compatibility while you're doing independent work so that's hard to achieve after the whole structure of things is gone but in the end i think the the fear is that you won't you'll be lost at sea like to extend the metaphor right that you'll be but i don't think it has to be that way because you can take small moves to combat that anchor dragging you down and those small moves might be things like five minutes a day or uh, of writing into the day or writing towards a question that you ask yourself that helps you set a framework for doing some creative work or maybe 30 minutes a day of creative writing or um, something like um, taking a walk that was something that you know I tried to allude to a lot through the retreat, et cetera, as a way to open things up. So we can have small practices to break the whole idea of um, the anchor of losing the structure of this experience. But there's some other answers in here. Why don't you guys throw those out? Those are all good, good answers for anchors. Um, yeah, so I said- uh, I mean, uh, lack of <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so i said lack of motivation because um the writer's retreat is awesome and um it's a college course as well though so i treat it like that so i go into like college mode but mm -hmm. um if i'm just writing on my own uh just as theodora mentioned then um time management is hard and even just um i think forcing myself to write because if i'm on my own and not in um, the writer's retreat area. Like if I'm at Starbucks, then I get distracted. I would walk around, I'll go on my phone and stuff. But mm -hmm. being specifically in the college campus, I'm so used to not being on my phone in school and focusing in school that it's much easier to um, force myself to write. Mm -hmm. So um, I just think that, yeah, after this, I'm worried that I'll have less motivation. And then on days that I don't feel like doing it, I won't push myself that hard. Mm -hmm. Makes good sense. So we're running out of time. I'm sorry to cut you guys off. Uh, no. Can I just get a one minute reflection on how you felt this exercise was? Did it help you sort of unpack your experience? Yeah, I liked it. Um, I thought that it was a good way to highlight everything that we've learned in the writer's retreat and see what everyone else's different perspectives were, um, especially because it shows what the strengths are, I guess, what the weaknesses are, and just how we all feel in general. And I think we all felt the same way, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, really agree with Tyler. I like how this exercise has like a two negative aspects and two positive aspects, mm -hmm. and then sort of um, two that deal with the um, deal with reflection of self, but then one with um, the reef looking forward at um, potential issues. Um, I think it's very well balanced and useful for uh, reflecting after a okay. project.
Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording because people are coming back. Thank you all.